Hey guys, welcome to the 187th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue working on our project uh, with the reading and writing classes. So, in the previous tutorial, we finished making this base I.O. class. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be uh, starting our reader class. So, now that we have this all done, we can just go ahead and click this minus button right here so that we don't have to look at it. Alright, so now we're just going to want to create our reader class, and we're going to want to make our reader class public. So we're going to type public class, and I'm just going to call it reader, since that's what it's going to be doing. And like I said in the previous tutorial, we're going to want to make our reader and writer class inherit from this base I.O. class. So we're just going to put a colon and then base I.O. So we're now inheriting from this base I.O. class, and everything inside of this base I.O. class is now inside of this class as well. And now we're just going to want to put our two curly braces. Alright, and inside of this class, we're going to want to create a binary reader. And we're going to be using the binary reader to actually do the reading, but we're just going to want to be changing some things around when it reads. Alright, and to create a new binary reader, we're just going to want to create a new using statement up here for using system.io so we actually have access to that binary reader class. So we're going to say right here, binary reader, and I'm just going to call it br. But we're not going to want to set it equal to something because we're going to actually have to pass the path to the file that we're going to be reading through the binary reader. And we're going to want to do that in the constructor. And the next thing that we're going to want to do right here before we move on to creating the constructors is creating a property that's going to basically hold the position uh, of the binary reader. So we're just going to type right here public since we want to make this property public. And it's going to be a long, so we're just going to say long. And if you don't know what a long is, it's a 64-bit signed integer. And we went over that in a while back, actually. And then we're just going to call this property position, so position. And we're just going to have it um, return the current position of the binary reader. So git, and we're just going to have it return dr dot uh, base stream dot position. And then when we set or change the position, we're going to want to change the position of this binary reader. So we're just going to say right here, set. And then we're going to say binary reader's um, position uh, equals the value that the user sets this position property to. So we're just going to put value right there. All right, and then we're just going to want to give uh, basically a description of what this position is. So we're just going to want to say summary right there. And we're just going to say the position to read at. Alright. And now we can actually create our constructors. And I'm just going to minus this because I don't really like looking at it. But anyways, now we can create our constructors. So instead of having to type out like public, reader, and whatever, I'm just going to type CTOR and then hit tab twice and it'll just create a constructor for us. And we're going to actually want to have the user pass through the path to the file that we want them to read. So we're going to say string path, and this is going to be the first of two constructors. And inside of here, we're just going to want to set dr equal to a new binary reader. And we're just going to want to say file.openread, and then that file that the user passes through right here. So we're just going to say path. All right. And the next thing that we're going to want to do, actually, is set that byte order property, or that byte order value down here to um, big endian since we defaultly want it to be big endian. So we're just going to say byte order equals byte order dot big endian. And we actually just want to make sure that it's accessing the byte order inside of this class right here. So we're just going to say this dot byte order so that we know it's accessing the one inside of this class and not the one inside of this base class. All right. And now we're just going to want to create one more constructor, and in this other constructor, the user will be able to pass through the uh, byte order that they want to use. So we're just going to type again, CTOR, tab twice, and then we're going to want to say BR equals a new binary reader, and we're going to want to have them pass through a string here, and we're also going to want to have them pass through um, a byte order. So we're going to say byte order, and I'm just going to call this BO for byte order. All right. And then we're going to want to say file.openread, that file that they pass through. And then we're just going to want to set the byte order to the byte order that the user passes through right here. So we're going to say this.byteOrder to access the byte order inside of this class equals bo, which is the byte order that the user passes through this constructor right here. 
And the last thing that we're going to want to do is basically just give a description of, or a quick summary of this constructor right here. So we're just going to want to say, create a reader oops, to read a file. And for the path right here, we're just going to want to say the path to the file to read. And then we're just going to want to do the same thing for this down here. So we're just going to paste this. And then we're actually going to want to create um, uh, basically a summary or a description of what this byte order is. So this is BO. So we're just going to change this to BO. And then we're going to say the order of the bytes to read. All right, and you guys can probably come up with a better description than that, but whatever, it's just a tutorial. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so see you guys.